Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've just checked my settings. It is saying that my USB lavalier microphone is on. So I'm counting on this little device here, which I'm going to clip it to the front or the top of my laptop, which is where I always had it and you heard it fine. So I'm going to believe it's going to work just as fine today as it did last night put up a little video, checked it, it sounded great. All right, somebody asked me to do a teaching on the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not like I was kind of mentioning in one of the videos I did recently, trying to go into it a little bit in case I didn't get to do this, but I've prayed about it, prayed about it last night. I pulled up, uh, scriptures on it before I even took my dog out this morning and prayed again. Excuse me, I'm going to turn my phone off because after I'm done with this, I'm going to take a nap anyway or try to get some rest. I do that to get me through the day. All right. That I can get signal on my computer. I don't like doing it on the phone if I can help it. All right, so... We're talking about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, but it also leads us to another subject, and that is unforgivable sin. <laughs> Sorry. I don't like looking a mess. Anyway, let's pull up the scriptures. I've got pulled up here, first of all, the three uh, the synoptic gospels, as they're called. I mean, that there are gospels that have the same thing in two or more of them all right so all four gospels uh, do not have it but three out of four do okay um let's see what is blasphemy of the holy spirit and why is it unforgivable all right Jesus says, let's go to Matthew first, chapter 12, verse 31. Let's see. Jasper, please do not bark now. Jasper, it's housekeeping. Okay. It In the Strong's Concordance, it's G988, the word blasphemy. And it's used in the following manner as blasphemy 16 times. Railing. That's like going on and on, evil speaking. Railing. And then the next one is actually evil speaking. Used one time. The words evil speaking is used one time. So why would anybody speak evil of the Holy Spirit? And what did Jesus say about it? All right, I have to back back this up alright therefore I say to you any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people but blasphemy against the spirit shall not be forgiven this is in the NASB 95 alright so I had pulled up the words, uh, the, the, trying to find the meanings of the words. And um, it, and with praying for understanding, I just didn't really get what I was looking for. So what I want to do is just read to you the scriptures and then we'll get into what an for, unforgivable sin is. He says, Jesus goes on to say, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, if you ask forgiveness, that is. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Now, as I was trying to point out in a video I did a couple of videos ago, might have been yesterday, might have been the day before, it all has to do with the intentions of the heart. If you try to, if you say that 
all works uh, that are supernatural that we know some are done by the Holy Spirit, some are done by demons. We know this. This is why we need discernment, discerning of spirits. Jesus understands that. But when you lump all supernatural speaking in tongues versus uh, the false tongues from the demon of the kundalini spirit, okay? If you lump them together saying all of that is demonic, you are saying that people who pray in tongues are praying from demons. Do I want to sit here and tell you that you're guilty of that? That you might as well give up, throw the book in? That is something you've got to take up with the Lord. I ha I had one of y'all emailing me thinking you were guilty of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because you were thinking some obviously from a demon. See, we all have demons if you don't get deliverance. There's very few people born into a holy family. Do you understand that? If your parents, both of them, were raised Pentecostal or Assemblies of God, believing in the Bible the way it's supposed to be believed in, not the lies, not the doctrinal lies of once saved, always saved, and the Acts of the Apostles died out with the Apostles, and... Uh, Oh, there's so many doctrinal errors. That's why there's 30,000 different denominations of Christianity in America. I don't know if that includes, is it that many in the rest of the world? I don't know. I only know what I read on, I think it was CARM. That's a Christian Apologetics Research Ministry. Great site if you're doing research. C-A-R-M, in all caps, dot O-R-G. I would not agree with every single word spoken, but most of it is like it doesn't really matter. It's it's uh, the kind of thing. It's not a salvation issue. Okay, so Jesus is telling these people, um, in fact, it's titled, the next few words, the next words down, the, it's titled in the NASB, Words Reveal Character. You see, let me read on just a little. Matthew 12, 33 says, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, he's talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They are obviously from the bloodline of Satan. Nephilim. He's calling them a brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak what is good? Now, we know they weren't all that way, were they? Because Nicodemus came to him at night wanting to know the truth. So he was truly from the line of whatever tribe he was from and was redeemable. For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. You see, it's a heart issue. If in your heart you are seeking the Lord, you've asked him into your heart, you've given your life over to him, you've invited in his Holy Spirit, you've accepted what is the word of God says. The book of Acts, if you've read the book of Acts, even the first parts of it were the, on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit fell upon the apostles and everyone in the upper room. There were 120 of them. And what looked like tongues of fire settled upon each and every one of them. And they all began speaking in a spiritual language or another language as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now, when you go into a denominational church that tells you that no longer happens, that is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. You're sitting under the authority of a blasphemer. I'm going to speak it right out. 
And so many people are weak, lukewarm Christians because of it. They are not invited to come forth, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because they're being taught it doesn't exist anymore. Do you get that? So if you don't, let's say you don't believe that way, because I think if you did, you wouldn't be in my, you wouldn't be following my channel. If you've invited, you've accepted the fact that when you become born again, you do get the gift of the Holy Spirit, whether you're baptized in water or not. The baptism you want to seek is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It means to be fully immersed, saturated with the Holy Spirit from head to toe. When that happens, you will manifest. Just like when a demon comes out, it manifests through either coughing, burping, vomiting, or yelling, screaming even. I know I had it happen to me. Some people will, when I, like Derek Prince, when I listened to his videos, and he said, now after, he, after the sermon, and he said, now repeat after me, and we rebuked the demons. He said, now take a deep breath and exhale and blow it out. That's when you will either cough or you will yawn. Some people, there's some sort of manifestation of it leaving. You can believe it or not. Turn it off and leave. I don't care. I'm telling you the truth. If there's no manifestation, the chances are it's still in there. So do it again. Go through it again. If you're at a conference, go to the next one and pray in the meanwhile for Jesus to help you be clean of it. Okay? All right. I went to an Assemblies of God church where we had conferences every six months for the women, every six months in between for the men. So every three months there was a conference, man for the women, for the man for the women. So they could get clean of their demons and get filled with the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. Okay, it didn't happen to my husband. It didn't happen for him. He didn't get clean of his demons and he didn't get filled with the Holy Spirit, but he tried. He just needed to go again. He needed to do more praying and fasting in between. He needed to get closer to the Lord for those six months in between, but he didn't do it. He didn't follow through. When you live a lifetime of sin, constantly falling back, and we're going to get into a scripture about that, when you keep falling back into sin and not repenting like you should, you get and invite more and more demons into you. And I think that's what happened to me because in my early walk with Christ, even after I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I never turned from Jesus. I never turned away and said, to heck with this Christian life, I can't do it. I always loved him. I read my Bible. I prayed over food. I prayed my bedtime prayers. Prayed probably not every night. But I prayed. And when I could. It's so strange. I felt like when I got married. Which I was married three times. I felt like we need to be in church. Because with the first guy. I didn't insist it. And our marriage fell apart. And I thought well if we both stay close to God in church. That'll prevent that from happening. Well, it didn't. Because my second husband was a Baptist. And we went to his kind of church for seven years. Oh, yes, we did. While we were there is when I got sick. With MECFS. You can make of that what you want. I know what I think about it. I was cursed and I deserved it. Okay. Now, I want to move on to, um, wait, let me finish this. He's, he's telling them, you brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. So, if in your heart you are seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or you have it, but you hear someone praying in a kundalini tongue, and you say, I think that's of the devil. Because your spirit is discerning that that's not 
doesn't sound. You get a check in your spirit. That is not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Okay, you're discerned, even if you're wrong. You're trying to learn to discern the spirits. Do you get the difference? I hope you do. He says in verse 35 of Matthew chapter 12, The good man brings out of his good treasure what is good, and the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. All right, I'm going to exit out of there. And let's see, this is, uh, that. oh, that's my search area that uh, sent me to Luke 12 10 as well well actually I went to Mark 328 next Mark 328 says verily I say unto you this is the KJV all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme that means Father God and Jesus. Those are forgivable. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. In danger of. Because they said, he hath an unclean spirit. That's all they said. The Pharisees said, he has an unclean spirit. Okay. And that's all that says. That's all it says that talks about it in Mark. All right. I did not pull up Luke. I hope I made my point clear on blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The difference. It's a heart issue. Are you seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Do you believe the gifts of the baptism of the gifts that come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and even before you're baptized, even before you're filled? There are people who get prophecies, dreams, maybe even visions that don't even pray in tongues because they haven't been completely filled. And they will argue with me and say, oh, yes, I have. I just don't speak in tongues. OK, then I want to ask them or you, if you're listening, why not? Do you not want to? Do you have a problem with it? Are you afraid of being accused of having a kundalini spirit? Are you able to discern the two? Maybe not yet, but you should want to. Don't be afraid that, that Satan has counterfeit gifts. Just seek for the real ones for that do come with the Holy Spirit baptism. Pray for them. And the person who asked me to keep you in prayer for your baptism of the Spirit to be in field, I am praying for you. All right. God counts it when you want it and you are truly seeking it. Now we're going to get into, how do I say this? Even though in the Gospels, Jesus tells us the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. We know there's another unforgivable deed. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 13. You see, our English translations are not perfect. Jesus told me in a message one time that although the translations are not perfect, he made sure the gospel message and our ability to learn what he wanted us to know would be left intact. He, Satan can only get away with only so much. And there's a member on the team of Grafted In Team Jesus that was shown that the English language was developed by Satan. So, and think about this. What's the universal language? today English 
What language do you think will be used in the New World Order? It will be English. The Europeans and a lot of other countries, or areas of other countries, make their children learn English from kindergarten on up. Why is that? How come they can speak English, but we can't, we aren't made to, we don't even get to start learning Spanish and French until high school. Ninth grade, I think, is when it began. All the schools I went to. I don't know about all over the country. Perhaps they started in seventh grade eventually, where you could learn Spanish because of all the immigrants. Most everybody I knew took Spanish or French or uh, I took Latin because at that time when I was in high school, you had to have Latin to get into nursing school and I already had a goal of going to nursing school. So I took two years of Latin and I aced it, but it's an unspoken language. It's an important language. It has a lot to do with the Vatican and Rome and medicine and legal terms. All right, I got off on that subject. I shouldn't have. I don't know why I got off on that. Oh, because of the English language, we read a Bible in the English language. It has been tampered with, yes. Our translations are not pure, which is why it's very helpful if you can pull up the Aramaic New Testament. It, Aramaic is what Jesus spoke. And the apostles, a lot of them. Uh, Paul spoke Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek. He was very learned, okay? Very well educated. So anyway, I wanted to throw that in so you would understand why our English translations are not perfect. But Jesus saw to it we would have enough to know how to live how to love him, how to serve him, how to love each other, okay? How to get to heaven. Now I'm in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he, which is the Antichrist, causes all, both small, that's children, and great, that's old men, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. This is what John was shown in a vision. Is this literal? Obviously not. Let's pull up the word tools. Let's go to the word mark. The word is 5480. Chiragma. It means a mark or graven. All right, a stamp, an imprinted mark of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the Antichrist, the mark branded upon horses, a thing carved, sculpture graven work of idolatrous images. Okay, and then below that, shiragma means from the same as G5482, a scratch or etching stamp, i.e., that's for example, a stamp as a badge of servitude or sculptured as in a figure or statue, graven, or mark. Okay, now you might think, okay, see that? that there proves that some certain something is not the mark. That's what you might think. Okay, Lord, thank you for reminding me. Let me pull up the six seals. Um, let's go to Bible search. I'm going to type in the word first seal. And hit search. And let's see where we got. There are no concordance results. <laughs> One result in the New Living Translation. Okay. 
<laughs> no, that's not what I want. All right, so I'm going to have to do um, rider on the first horse. The rider. Uh, uh, right, let's just go to Revelation 6. All right, now. This, this might blow your mind. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see, the four beasts are in heaven. There again, this is what John saw. He wrote it down best he could, and we're reading it in English. Keep that in mind. Verse 2 of Revelation 6. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and we're fixing to look that word up, and a crown, which is also corona, was given unto him, and he went forth, conquering and to conquer. Let's go to tools. Let's go down to who wears white coats? Just throwing it out there. A bow. He had a bow. Listen to the pronunciation of the Greek word. Strong's G 5115. Toxin. 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 What do we call a toxin? It's spelled T-O-X-O-N. In English, we spell it T-O-X-I-N. And it's probably Latin. Toxin. Something that is toxic. Do you got that? All right. And a crown was given him. G-47-35. Now in here, it is called... Stephan Stephanos from an apparently primary Stepho to twine or wreath. But we also know that the word crown is corona. Okay? Enough said. I don't want to make this too long. You either get it or you don't. He went forth conquering and to conquer. That's the first seal. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that on YouTube. Okay, so we're going to go to... Uh, let's see, can I close that out? Yeah. Tragma. Oh, I hope I didn't close out anything important. Oh, I did. I was in the book of Revelation. Revelation 13. Let me go back there. Oh, I forgot to look up Bo. Shoot. Sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to go back to Revelation 6. Because I, I think a lot of people probably haven't done this and you don't get it. You might not. I meant to say this. I can say this on YouTube. i got to go to the word bow so that you understand that the, the word is toxin. But I want to pull up the 5115. The number is 5115. A bow is apparently as the simplest fabric, a bow, but it also means well, maybe it was <laughs> Holy Spirit, please help me because this isn't leading me to where I want. Did they take it out? I doubt that. Maybe toxin was all I wanted to pull from that. Okay, I have to move on because I thought it said something else and apparently it's in another kind of reference. All right, so we went to the first chapter 13, 
talking about the beast, which he has been revealed to many of us. He is behind the scenes in politics. He is right now with our president. Uh, did y'all catch the clip of President Biden saying, it's very short, like one of those TikTok videos, he said, I am not your president. President Trump is your, still your president. And as we Catholics like to say, may God have mercy on our soul. And that was, a, that was it. Like a six second video. I did not share it because I have such trouble sharing these things except with my camera. All right, so anyway. So he just, uh, verse 14. Wait a minute, that's not it. He causes all both small and great. Yeah, we know that they just voted to to um, for the five to eleven year old group to get vaccinated, right? But any of us believe that the Lord will take us up out of here, His first fruits and His innocence before that happens. Yes, there was a news publication saying that it was in an experimental phase with even younger children than five. They showed a picture of a two or three year old child receiving a shot. Was it for the coronavirus? Was it just any picture of a little bit of a video clip of a child getting their regular immunization? I don't know. I do know this. Not all children are from the bloodline that will go to heaven anyway because they were, they're of the bloodline of Satan. They are from Nephilim. If you saw my video that had the picture of all the royals from the Buckingham Palace and you went to the video on BitChute and watched it, well, I think it was on Rumble. Paul and Adrian put it up from Off Grid Desert Farming. What really goes on in Buckingham Palace? Those people are Nephilim. The video I shared this morning, MSNBC actually reported some very high profile figures are not human. They are reptiles or aliens. He's calling them aliens, but they are fallen angels, just as in the days of Noah. Remember what was going on in the days of Noah. Why did God flood the earth? Because the 200 angels left their first estate. They were cast out of heaven to the second heaven. There's a third heaven where heaven is. Father, the angels, everyone that's died and gone to heaven. That's the third heaven. There's a second heaven. That's where the angels were supposed to reside with Satan when they were cast out for rebelling against God. And then there's the heaven we see, what we call the heavens, where the clouds are, where the airplanes fly. Okay, people call that the heavens. It's really our skies. Okay, so those 200 of those angels came down to earth and took for their sails daughters of men and mated with them and they had children who became giants mighty men of renown those people people i use the word loosely never died in the flood the flesh part of them might have but not the nephilim fallen angel part of them they live on to this day they mate with humans underground at Area 51. You don't have to believe me. That's another video for another day. And not on YouTube, probably. Maybe I will do one on it. All right. So anyway, let's get back to this study, okay? So that note, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name except for him that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name 
the patents involved with this medical sin and with 060606, it contains two ingredients called luciferase and luciferin. Luciferin, luciferase, named after Lucifer by the satanic scientists who discovered that he could take the goo out of the back end of a lightning bug and the frogs that glow green at night. Reptilian DNA is in it. Do you get it? His name is in it. And the number of his name is in it. Moving on to chapter 14. Oh, it's went on to say, and the number is three, six. I'm sorry, I didn't finish reading the sentence. Go all the way to the bottom. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Now we'll move on to chapter 14. The lamb and the 144,000 on Mount Zion. That is first fruits, people. It says uh, that they are, let's see, I'll read it. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. We're up in heaven right now. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, it says. The church is often referred to as a woman. America is Mystery Babylon. The New World Order is coming up out of America. The One World Trade Center is the Third Temple. Sacrifices are being done up on top of it. It goes on to say they are not defiled with women. These churches teaching falsely the Catholic Church for they are virgins. We've come out of them, as Jesus has said, come out of her, my people, and we follow him and him alone, not some man behind a pulpit, teaching lies. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Take it to the Father, take it to the Lord, take it to the Holy Spirit if you don't believe me. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Are we perfect? No. But we repent quickly. We ask for forgiveness quickly when we sin. I'm going to skip this part and we're going to doom for worshipers of the beast. Verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, 
That's coming. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Okay. The last thing I wanted to go over is from Hebrews 6. And it's titled in the NASB 95, The Peril of Falling Away. Verse 1. Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about the Christ. That means what you tell the new believer. Elementary, like kindergarten, first and second grade. What you teach people about Christ. Let us press on to maturity. The footnote is perfection. Not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works. See, there it, it is true that it is by faith, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 says, it is by faith that we are saved and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But then verse 10 goes on to say that we are saved to do good works. You see, the Baptists don't want to go on to verse 10 they only use verses 8 and 9 to back up their once saved, always saved doctrine. Moving on, verse 2 of instruction about the washings and laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. He's saying we'll go over it again with people. We'll take the time to do a sermon on the elementary stuff if God permits. You see? Moving on to verse 4. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Okay, you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or at least you've received him enough that you've had received a gift or two. Maybe you were getting dreams. Or maybe you had gotten a vision or two. It freaked you out and you turned from him. Or maybe you didn't get any of that. And you were resentful because others were getting it and you weren't. So you lost your faith and turned away. I sinned but I never turned away. Therein lies the difference. There's a difference in slipping up and sinning. Even repeatedly, as long as you're continually asking for forgiveness, you're recognizing it as sin. You're not turning. You're not turning away and saying to heck with that Christianity business. It isn't working for me. God doesn't hear me. He doesn't answer my prayers. I'm done with it. And you go off and join some new age, some Buddhist temple, some... I don't know, maybe you become a Jehovah's Witness because you see how they all know their scriptures better than Christians you know. Whatever. You're turned away. That's the difference. He's talking about those people here. You've tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come 
and then have fallen away. I'm in verse 6. Hebrews 6, verse 6. It is impossible to renew them again to repentance, since they again crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. Now, man is really ignorant. We know the English translation isn't perfect. Jesus clearly taught that there was one unforgivable sin, but then John was shown of another. Is this yet another? I propose to you, and this is something you got to take up with the Lord. I don't think anybody that follows me is in this boat, but you might know somebody that is. They were Christian, and they turned. My first husband was like that. By the time I started dating him, he was fully enmeshed in the world. And even though Jesus told me to break up with him, and I tried, I mailed him my little pre-engagement ring that he had bought me so he could have his class ring back with a letter saying, now that I've given my life to Jesus, he's told me to break up with you so I can no longer see you anymore. Here is your ring back. He came racing over to my house, screeching in the driveway. My mom, me, my sisters, come out. I don't know where my brothers were, probably playing ball somewhere. And he orders me to put that GD ring back on and don't you ever take it off again, he said. I was so weak and wimpy and pathetic and 17 years old. I said, okay. And I put it back on. And I ended up marrying him, but I got two beautiful girls out of it. The Lord didn't hate me for it. I disobeyed, but he stayed with me. And look where I am today. I'm alone. I live alone in a senior care facility. My kids don't want anything to do with me. And a lot of that has to do with my sins when they were young because our marriage fell apart. I'm not getting into the dirty laundry of it. That man was evil to the core. God knew it. And he had been a Pentecostal. And he used to walk to church, he told me, toting his Bible under his arm till he was into his 14th year of life. He was 14-something. His peers kept making fun of him. Oh, there goes Georgie walking to church. He finally couldn't take it no more. Threw his Bible down and quit going. Got into the world with his friends. But then before he died, after we were divorced, my girls told me he would put one of them on his lap, the other one beside him, and he would read them the word, saying, it's my job to raise you up right. That's what they told me. So did he go to heaven? I hope so. I hope so. Maybe he was able to repent. So I don't really know how to explain this scripture. Again, I think it goes to the nature of the heart. There have been other people that have said their kids have joined satanic cults and are still in it. Or they married a Satanist and have nothing to do with them now. So I can't judge them. Only God can judge them. I hope I see my first husband again in heaven. I really do. I hope I covered the subject of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and unforgivable sin adequately 
I know this has gone on long, so I'm going to end it here. I'm going to pull this forward and say anything else. See, I didn't go to seminary, and I'm glad I didn't. What I do know, I, I've gotten from the Holy Spirit. And I prayed, Lord, let your Holy Spirit guide me in this teaching. Let me not say anything that would lead anybody astray. And I pray that you can understand in your heart what my intentions were with every word. And anything you didn't understand, please take it up with Father. Okay? Ask Him to let His Holy Spirit help you learn from His Word. And did that give you discernment for when things are not really sitting right in your spirit? Even when you're reading your Word, everything is not 100% correct. But which parts? Let Jesus show you. Otherwise, we have to take it for what we have and take everything up with him. Okay? Bye for now, brothers and sisters. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, each and every one of us, all our devices, and our internet connections. With that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.